and we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 28 of Homeopathic Voices from Around the World, which, as you know, is a companion series to the Homeopathy Health Show, which I host and produce for the UK Health Radio Network. <clears throat> now, during Homeopathy Awareness Week, I've had the real good fortune to have four students covering years one, two, three, and four from the, uh, from the School of Homeopathy, and they joined me on the Homeopathy Health Show for a two-part special podcast to give you a real-life uh, example and perspective of what it's like studying homeopathy across the board. Also during Homeopathy Awareness Week, the production team from Introducing Homeopathy joined me for a sit-down, and Kim Alia, the producer, also shared an exclusive, a world-exclusive clip from the film itself. So do check that out on my official YouTube channel. And um, also... Dr. Laurie Grossman and Marjorie Stearns from the National Center for Homeopathy in the US joined me live from New York earlier this week. And we were talking about the upcoming Joint American Homeopathic Conference, the JAHC, which is taking place very, very soon. And today I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm delighted, I'm excited, and I'm really, really inspired to welcome the co-principals, the students, and postgraduate students from the South Down School of Homeopathy, which is based in Chichester in Sussex in the UK. So without further ado, hey everybody, welcome. Fantastic to have you here. Hey. So firstly, we let me start with um, Michael Bird and Christian Taylor. Both of you are the uh, co-principals for South Down School and uh, what a magnificent school it is indeed. I've had the good, uh, I've had the honor, should I say, I was gonna say good fortune, but it's actually a real honor and privilege to be able to have, um, to visit the school and deliver four lectures during a CPT day. And uh, some of the actual attendees are here today. Uh, do tell us a bit more about the school and um, how it came into being and uh, you know, its successes so far. I know it's a very, very popular school indeed. Um, it was started about, 30 years ago um and kathy pitt who still teaches for us started it with two other people uh i was teaching there for about 18 years uh and then i was asked to run it um by one of the principals at the time who sadly died a week later um so it was all a bit of a shock mm -hmm. and about seven years ago i started running it with sarah keevil um and then tracy uh white also followed on and finally two last year is it last year, Michael? Yeah, it was last year. Last year, Michael joined me uh, as co-principal uh, and have made a much more smooth running ship, I have to say. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, good fun and we're still going. Uh, what about you, Michael? Uh, well, I'm actually, yeah, I've, I started as co-principal last year at South Downs, which was an amazing honour for me being, I'm actually a graduate from, from the college. So I qualified at South Downs in... Uh, 2011 after studying at various different schools but I did four years at uh, South Downs and yeah qualified 2011 and now have the honour of teaching new aspiring homeopaths at, at South Downs which is yeah it's, it's amazing amazing work to do and it's a blessing every time I go into lecture and see all the lovely students. Having been to South Downs and having, like I said, the good good fortune to deliver at the CPD day, I I loved the atmosphere. You know, it's such a uh, a calming atmosphere and it's such a wonderful atmosphere to actually learn because if you're calm, you're going to retain a lot more information. But also the fact that it's very interactive and of course all the homeopathic courses offered by schools and colleges around the world, you know, have different dynamics and uh, the way that they actually work. But nearly every single one of them have this uh, benefit that, you know, there's ample time for discussion and interaction because that's the best form of learning homeopathy. We may have hundreds and hundreds of books. And by the way, I've got tons over here. And I have <laughs> read them all, by the way, just in case. <laughs> but um, whether I remember them, that's a different story. But, um, you know, it's it's always interesting to be to have this uh, real life experience. And uh, actually, following on from that, I must formally introduce the students. Um, and if you're post grad, just say you're post grad. But uh, uh, Hannah Beach, uh, Teresa, Caroline, Ella, Joe, Annabel, Lou, uh, Jules, 
Alex and uh, Jeanette and Michelle. So uh, welcome, everybody. It's so wonderful to have you on this live. It's an honor. Yeah. Thank you. So do share what it's like for you. Um, what's that feeling like to be able to study homeopathy? In fact, let if, if anyone's willing to give an example of why they enrolled with South Down School, what was that turning moment where you thought, do you know what, I, I want to do homeopathy, I want to serve humanity, I want to help people. A anyone's welcome to... to I can yeah, jump welcome. in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, Annabelle and I, who's also on the Zoom, we'll both, we'll both do a little wave. Um, <laughs> we both met at a South Downs um, of School of Homeopathy open day. Um, and um, because South Downs actually run an, an open day each year, um, and there's one coming up. Um, so we we met on that first day and we were excited to uh, do a sample lecture um, and have discussions about how the course works. Um, and uh, we're now in our third year um, and uh, really excited and we've learned so much along the way. Um, my background before coming to the open day uh, was I was first introduced to homeopathy uh, by a homeopath who I saw and did a um, homeopathy first aid uh, course to help with family and friends and was inspired. I thought, like, this is a health system that healthcare system that actually really works is really simple. Um, also, we like to think as we're learning our, our trade um, and was hooked ever since. Wonderful. Uh, what about yourself, uh, Annabelle? Oh, I think that I think the same. I was, you know, I was just reflecting when Caroline was talking, and it seems such a long time ago since we were met, first met on that open day. You know, we we've been through so much since then. But I think when I, when we arrived, we were sort of uh, sort of welcomed in by all the students. It was a lovely setting. It was um, a beautiful place to go and study, and everyone was so welcoming and like minded and open and generous. And it was a really it was a pleasure to be there on that day. And I came away and I interviewed on that day um, with Christian, I think, because I thought I definitely this is where I want to be. I don't I don't want to be going anywhere else. I don't particularly want to be going up to London. This seems just so wholesome and friendly and um, a happy place to, to study. Having, you know, going back to studying after quite a few years um, was daunting enough. But to be in that supportive environment was was just perfect. I, I you know, you're, you're very fortunate, all the students, um, because you have two amazing principles, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, that's so, so important as well. Uh, supportive, caring, but very, very relaxed. And I think that's, you know, again, we go back to that calm and homeopathy is a calm system. You know, we don't panic in homeopathy, right? It's so, so important. If there's a, a common cold or a flu, let's say just acute or a complex acute, there is no need to panic, but rather just observe and look at the symptoms. And and that goes into the teaching style as well. That's so, so important because if you rush, sometimes you just don't remember anything. But if you take your time and then you follow through with examples and then you have a discussion, it's so, so important, which actually takes me on to Michael because of mental health conditions. And I know that you've delivered a number of uh, webinars and talks <laughs> on mental health. And personally, I found that sadly, of course, like every homeopath or everybody around, uh, you know, in the 21st century, we find that emotional disturbances and imbalances are quite rife, sadly, um, for whatever reason. Trials, tribulations, just life in general, what it throws at you. Chemicals also have a huge role here society in general um and i know that homeopathy is has been so incredibly effective at treating mental health disorders emotional imbalances whatever you want to term them as you know so do share um, some of your wisdom michael uh, <laughs> i'm not sure about wisdom i think it's just sort of experience and being lucky enough to work with clients and patients in the past where i've i've run uh, sort of for seven or eight years nearly nine years like community clinic, clinics in homeopathy and because of organizations and charities that allow you to do that work like homeopathy in the Sussex community who's a charity in the, in the southeast who run clinics in for mental health domestic abuse and sexual violence we're able to go in and deliver these clinics to people who really need them those people who are marginalized 
And my aspect of mental health has been incredible to actually use homeopathy, sometimes alongside and quite commonly alongside psychiatric medication. And that's the power of homeopathy, that that psychiatric medication, yeah, they're going to be, they, people are going to be on that kind of medication because that's what's prescribed by psychiatrists and GPs. But homeopathy is so powerful, the healing of trauma, the healing of sort of anxiety and how we can support people with homeopathy. That's the beauty that I love doing homeopathy for people with quite severe mental health conditions. And also the way we use homeopathy now without the language that are in the books from homeopathy is can be quite dated at times. So we really have to interpret and navigate the materia medica and navigate and interpret the homeopathic repertory to actually bring it up to date into this century. And that's my aim as well I'd like to deliver to students is how to navigate the language that are in these amazing materia medicas and repertories from bygone years, but sort of bring it forward because it's invaluable information that we can get from these books, but it's actually used in modern language to do with psychiatry that we need to really shift in the way we look at some cases and remedies. So that's, I don't know if that's wisdom or just me talking about what I do. So. Well, you do very, very well indeed, my friend. And also uh, coming up some good news, isn't it, for you on a personal front. So congratulations. Oh, yeah, I'm getting married. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Michael. Yeah, well, I, I think I need a few remedies for the stress I'm going through <laughs> for the wedding. Uh, Just uh, don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah, that's probably, yeah, I'm definitely panic about the wedding, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ati. <laughs> Aconite will, will do you well, my friend, in, in your pocket. You know? I think I might yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um I was going to ask I... you, um, yeah, sorry, who was that? Uh, that was Ella. I was going to say because I come from a similar background to Michael. I, I'm a psychologist and I've been working with uh, ASD children in my uh, previous career. And I chose homeopathy because of how gentle it was with the children and how you didn't need um, um, a lot of tools. You only needed to observe in order to match the remedies and then uh, notice the improvements, which was absolutely amazing. So thank you, Michael, for all the learning we are doing at uh, South Downs about uh, mental health. My pleasure. Thank, oh, you. thank you, Ella. Thank you for, this, for sharing that. Uh, Hannah, I wanted to come to you and just ask you what your experience has been like studying homeopathy. You know, what uh, what do you remember from from some of the years that you've been through? I mean, it's generally a four year course, isn't it? And I'm going to ask Christian for more info, actually, uh, soon about the courses offered. But uh, what's uh, what's your sort of insights and uh, because homeopathy is not I, I talk to so many people around the world as you can imagine and um, people always ask that question well what is it like and how long does it take and you know, how much does it cost and how many hours are needed and is it five days a week seven days a week is it weekends is it full-time is it part-time is it hybrid you get the idea right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how has your experience been well I can't believe that I've only got two weekends left uh, which sort of brings up mixed feelings because I can't wait to be qualified because obviously four years ago it seemed like such a long stretch and it's gone so quickly. But at the same time, I know there's going to be quite a void actually just leaving college and the whole community. Um, it's For me, it's been amazing. It's been, it was almost a lifelong dream. Um, I started actually saving to do a homeopathy course nearly, well, it's now 21 years ago. I opened my bank account and started saving to do it. So in the meantime, I've sort of had a family, had four children, and it wasn't the right time for me. Um, I'd sort of come from a nursing, trained as a nursing background. Um, and yeah, it's, it is a dream. It is a bit of a roller coaster. It's a lot of hard work. Um, there are tough weekends and, um, um, equally sort of amazing weekends but for me other than have my four lovely children I must say this in case they're, they're watching um it's the best it honestly is is the best thing I've ever done it's it's a dream and it's been yeah I'm really gonna get choked up if I talk about how much I'm gonna miss college life but obviously excited about you know the next chapter I'm practicing 
You know, one of the beauties of homeopathy is always that when you study together, you learn together, irrespective of what years you're in, um, you uh, always have this uh, opportunity to, well, not an opportunity, you end up making friends, you know, with with whoever yeah. you've studied with across the board. And, and I say it's not just year one to four or one, you know, split them up, because even when I was there, as an example, during lunchtime, certainly, you know, we were talking and Michael was there and all the years were together. We were we were talking about various things and what you're doing and how's your course, how's your year going, etc. It's a really nice opportunity, isn't it, just to make friends and sit together. And those friends, certainly within the world and the sphere of homeopathy, are, are lifelong friends in, in the majority of cases, Absolutely. unless someone moves off to a different planet, which hasn't happened yet. Of course. We'll There's a possibility, down. you never know, in the future. <laughs> um, I wanted to come to you, uh, Theresa. How... Uh, How's your experience has been so far? Well, I didn't know anything about homeopathy when I joined. Um, I got into, I've always had an interest in more of a natural thing. I seem to see through, uh, you know, a lot of the corruption that there is a bit with the um, drugs industry. Um, and so I thought I would just find something that fitted in with what uh, I believed in. And I found um south downs online fortunately i'm only nine miles down the road so i have no excuse to be late <laughs> um, but what i have found is literally like you say i've made friends for life um the the weekends it, it sort of given me something that i didn't know was missing um i the more i'm learning the more i just love it um the college i feel is quite unique in from what I've gathered from listening to other people who are studying in that you know that the support and this family atmosphere I don't think other colleges have um, or not like we have anyway and going from year one to year four we're all one really um, and it yeah it's just is amazing just to, amazing. Uh, <laughs> and just to contribute a little bit more we are like a family and we do yeah. collaborate for every single thing we do um, for the college and we do uh, see each other in clinics as well which is amazing um mm. and we always look forward to the weekends when we come and we feel like we're home there um, yeah and it is just uh, incredible. And we have made friends for life. Everybody is so helpful and so altruistic. And yes, I couldn't be more happy. And I think there's something that you cannot get from an online course is the human interaction that we have Absolutely, at college yeah. every single Absolutely. weekend. Thank you. Christiana, just coming to you. Um, it's interesting what everybody has, has shared so far, isn't it? And it's so, so important, isn't it, to... to well, for want of a better word, not even to think about creating a, a, a scenario for, for learning. It just happens, doesn't it? It's almost organic and people gel and they're sitting next to each other and, you know, there's serious elements and there's some lighthearted elements, there's discussions. It's so important, isn't it, as far as homeopathy is concerned and, and, and learning? Agreed. Um, and I do, part, part of the family thing is because we're relatively small and I think that really helps. Um so, you know, basically, Michael and I do know everybody and, and you know, we're mixing all the time. So we're chatting in between uh, lectures and things. Um, and I kind of think we homeopathy lends itself to a certain kind of ethos, I think, which is about making connections and um, thinking just more deeply and broadly about things. Uh, and part of that process in in classrooms means that people tend to be sort of reveal things about themselves that perhaps in other situations and scenarios they wouldn't normally and those sorts of shared sometimes unhappy experiences for a lot for a lot of people a, in a very supportive environment i would argue can be sort of really healing and restorative in its own right and uh you know i definitely think that's a big part of doing something like a sort of healing course and i like to think that we particularly provide a really good forum for those those sorts of sort of uh, feelings and things so yes yeah, that, I think that's that's very eloquently put, actually, and I think that's so so important that sharing and as you befriend one another, and sometimes your own. We all obviously, we everybody has health issues or worries and anxieties, and it's nice, isn't it, to be able to share it, 
especially when it comes to like-minded individuals. And in this case, individuals who want to actually go out and help others. Yeah. So it's a beautiful scenario indeed, which takes me on to you, Lou. Uh, do share how your experience has been so far. Did I catch you off guard there? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Just woke me up, yeah. I should have, I should have done name that tune, didn't it? Ding. <laughs> it's over to you now. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ati. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's been, I'm in my fourth year now and, and similar to Hannah, you know, it's, I'm quite, can't believe I've got to the fourth year and it's all going to be over in a couple of weekends but it's been an incredible journey for me personally um I feel like I've made really close friendships like everyone else has said um and I hope those friendships last you know because I like friends they're good they're important and to have people to collaborate with as a homeopath that's vital I think it's a vital part of homeopathy I don't think you ever really stop learning it's a continuum it goes on beyond college and through your practice and patients and you're you're constantly well I am anyway I'm constantly learning something new which is brilliant um picking up bits of information reading new books and new remedies that come out it's all very very fascinating um personally when I first came to South Downs I was a little bit like oh god is this right for me you know because I knew about homeopathy before um and that's what inspired me to come was you know this is my vote definitely my vocation I don't want to be a security guard I don't want to be a cleaner anymore I want to be a homeopath that's what I'm here for um and I have a passion you know I just love it I absolutely love it um the first year was really good really fun it was enjoyable there was lots of like interaction and not just study 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 but you know lots of laughs lots of jokes and there's humor involved it's just really really friendly and the tutors are amazing they're just really encouraging very supportive very very supportive atmosphere um i came in with my own issues um and everyone's just been extremely supportive i feel really relaxed there i feel like it's home from home really it's like a family that i didn't have before so, yeah, so I love it. It's been an incredible journey. Really, really good place to learn. Brilliant. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm sure the co-principals will think of a, um, a, a alumni-themed uh, day once a year where students can get together, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. that would be so cool. We should do that, yes. <laughs> you know, I'll be there. Uh, Lou, you know you said uh, it was just the way you said it when you said, I like friends. I remember yeah. it took me back. And the reason I was smiling, it took me back to a podcast I did with Jeff Johnson. You all know Jeff, the homeopathic vet. And yeah. and he put in his bio, and he won't mind me sharing this because I sent it out on social as a blooper anyway. Um, and it said, you know, Jeff loves his family. And, and I asked the question in such a way in the podcast. And I said, Jeff, we know that you love your family. And then I stopped and I thought, well, hang on, that doesn't sound very, that, that sounds almost like nobody else does. And it's just Jeff who loves his family. <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry about that, Jeff. He said, he said, what would have been funny? This is just, he said, what would have been funny is if I turned around and said, no, I don't love them at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that's the end of that podcast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. but, um, I want to move over to uh, Joe. Uh, hi, Joe. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. Um, hi. Just um, one, one you know, Sorry, I think. Your, your insights really on uh, what it's been like for you. Uh, yeah, so I'm South postgrad. Yeah, I'm postgrad, and I um, graduated with Jules, Julia, who's here as well, um, a couple of years ago. Um, and we had we we still our year group still meet up regularly um, with some other homeopaths as well. And even just being here with everyone today just brings me right back to college days. Um, it's brilliant, yeah. Those were four, four of the best years of my life, without a doubt. Um, and yeah, the everyone's talked about the atmosphere, the family kind of orientated atmosphere, how friendly everyone is, um, the fact that it's a very sort of gentle, it's a very um, relaxed environment. And also, I think something that hasn't been touched upon is the fact that there are all sorts of visiting homeopaths each, every month and every weekend. So you really do get a feel for the different homeopaths out there um, and the different ways they prescribe, the different ways they think of remedies, you know, all they've all qualified and they've qualified using the homeopathic principles, but then they all have their own particular ways of prescribing or particular 
um, experiences. So it's, it was really, really useful and really interesting. And yeah, it was really interesting, just the variety of homeopaths out there. And the, and that was, yeah, that really was something that was very helpful for me. Um, and that, and then moving on to being qualified as a homeopath now, just the variety of the work is amazing. I absolutely love it. I think when I qualified, I was sort of thinking about having a niche, which lots of homeopaths do do. Um, and I did actually do, I did do a further course after at, after South Downs with a homeopath who specialises in treating aut autistic children. Um, and that was really interesting as well. And so I did kind of, I have niche slightly. Um, I do treat lots of autistic children, but I also have a really wide varied practice which I just I love so I haven't ended up totally niching because I like the variety of it um yeah it's it's amazing I love it and it's just a job that um yeah it's a vacation I absolutely love it and I and before South Downs I was doing it in a different career but I'd been thinking about doing a homeopathy course for probably about 10 years um and it was a few months before starting the course, um, I had an incident that put me in hospital. Um, it's quite a bad incident at the time. And it was when I was in hospital that I sort of really reassessed everything in my life and thought, right, I'm just going to do that course. Um, so, well, hope. so I had an interview with Christy and then started the course a few months later, that September. So that's kind of how it happened for me, I suppose. Yeah, that's such a wonderful journey. You said mm -hmm. something quite interesting about the different uh, lecturers that obviously come in. And I know that uh, Michael was talking to me about a guest who was playing the harp and love it. So do share, Michael, how that experience was. Um, um, well, sorry, it wasn't the harp, it was a violin. Well, there you go. That's how much I know about instruments. You weren't listening to me as well. I think that's yeah. the problem. I, I, I know about the flute. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was about... So Anne Lovett is a homeopath, but also a professional museum. Uh, museum. She's not a museum, <laughs> but she could be in the future. A music, musician. <laughs> no, uh, no, don't go there yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, and she does... Uh, she's a homeopath, but also she uses mindfulness techniques uh, the year fours could probably tell you a bit more about her lecture because I wasn't actually in the lecture, but she she is a homeopath and so she integrated homeopathic teachings along with mindfulness and part of her mindfulness lecture was to play a piece of music on her violin, which I, I think was so beautiful, made people you know, come to tears and the energy of the music. And yeah, I think we have guest uh, lecturers like Anne Lovett who delivered that and that's what we like to have that variation and that sort of influence from all these amazing homeopaths that are out there so it's not just myself and Christian teaching and I'd like to say without bigging Christian up Christian is an amazing lecturer and he taught me so he taught me many many moons ago he's been teaching her a long time and an incredible lecturer and I'm very home. old yeah, and he has been around <laughs> since time begun. So, <laughs> he, yeah, he's an he's an amazing lecturer, and Thank we're you. lucky to have him as the principal. And I was lucky to have him teach me as well and be my supervisor. So, the reason why I'm one of the reasons why I'm teaching at the college and being a principal is because of Christian. So, and plus Kathy, who still teaches at at the school, who founded the school, Kathy is still delivering amazing lectures. She taught me, she interviewed me for the college for when I was a, uh, a student. So, yeah, I've gone off slightly off piste there. Sorry. But <laughs> yeah, maybe the year fours can tell you a little bit more about the Anne Lovett's lecture. Yeah, please, uh, please do if anybody wishes to share. Uh, yeah, it's a I'm I'm sorry, go on. Go on. No, you, no, you, no, no, you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, I really loved that lecture. It was beautiful how she brought in an instrument and just threw out an example of like remedies and the energy that is in those remedies that resonates with people's energy when it's working on healing them. Mm. Um, and the piece of music that she played, I think it was something to do with the Berlin Wall. Um, it was a German piece of music and it was it was really moving. I was actually in tears in the lecture because it was so beautiful. Um so, yeah, I won't forget that lecture. It was really, really powerful. It was really powerful to bring in the music and the remedies together and give examples. It was just, yeah, it was amazing. It was a really good lecture, really good homeopath. 
It's quite interesting. You, you, you're talking about music here because um, Kim Elia was on. Uh, I had to sit down with the production team from introducing homeopathy last week. This was, and um, we were talking about the soundtrack for the film. And he said that he's found somebody who understands octaves and frequencies and the fact that certain octaves have to be a certain frequency for them to truly resonate with you. And yeah. apparently in the, I don't, I'm not a historian, so, but, you know, many moons ago, um, mm -hmm. they had got them right. And then somebody came along, um, you know, two, three hundred years ago, and they changed the frequency or the level mm -hmm. of tuning of the octaves. And now Kim has found someone who can actually take it back to how it's supposed to be. And he said, that's what really will impact when people listen to the real life uh, testimonials in in the film itself. And uh, with that music, it's powerful, isn't it? Because, you know, Lou was mm -hmm. mentioning about the violin and Michael mentioned it. So it's interesting, isn't it? It just has to be that right frequency, mm -hmm. which is actually homeopathy, right? Yes. Frequency, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was um, talking to Jan Schultz and he was on the podcast. We were recording the podcast, should I say. And uh, he said something really, really interesting, which I hadn't heard before. He said, we talk about frequencies and vibrational patterns and, and all that. And he said, it's information. A remedy is information. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the potency is how much information is in that remedy, right? So if it's a 6C, it's just enough. If it's a 1M, there's a lot of information in there. You know, it's quite... It's a fascinating uh, uh, conversation with him, which will be out soon. But yeah, totally off tangent, but interesting discussion, right? <laughs> which no, absolutely, I think I, I like to think about uh, um, remedies in, in terms of frequency as well, because um, I always think if you have the right remedy, then, and it, then it resonates with the person who has the right disease for it, if you wish. And um, that all um, has to do with um, frequency. And it's very interesting because recently I've seen a little clip that I'm going to share with you uh, after the podcast where somebody is hitting a note on a tuning fork at a certain uh, frequency. And when the frequency uh, is the same as an object that is near the tuning fork, it resonates, the object moves without touching. And when the frequency is lower or higher uh, than the object that is next to the tuning fork, then uh, the object is just inert. Nothing happens, basically, which I think is a great metaphor for homeopathy. Wonderful. Thank you. And that moves us on to either Jeanette or Jules. But I will go to my right, uh, Jeanette, the quantum healer and birth keeper. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. So it's really fascinating. I'm first year. Um, I kind of many, many years ago, I, I, I trained as a midwife. So I was very aware of things like Arnica and Calendula and Hypericum. The Hypercal cream was the, the in cream for, for perineal healing, things like that. My tutor, um, if any of you have seen a book called Homeopathy for Midwives, my tutor, Denise Tran, wrote the foreword for that as well. Mm. She's always she always pushed us into looking at complementary therapies and how we can assist women in childbirth and pregnancy. So she kind of got my interest going many, many years ago. Um, I left the NHS. I now work as a doula and birth keeper. Um, so I look after women in pregnancy and childbirth. And a couple of years ago, I was with Caroline Spear, who is uh, alumni from this college as well. We were at a birth together and she had a little box of magic pills with her. And the woman we were looking after got really shaky after birth. And she gave her this magic pill and she went, I don't know what you gave me, but I feel so much better. And I looked at Caroline, I thought, well, there is something in this, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So I did a course uh with the homeopath for the helios home uh the the childbirth kit got to know those remedies really well always encourage the women i look after to get a kit and to use it so i got to know those remedies really well in the last year and just decided i needed to know more i needed to come and actually learn how to be a proper homeopath and looking at all the frequencies i do hands-on healing spiritual angelic healing I do all that sort of thing and when I talk to fellow healers we know about the energy 
frequency and energy is is a big thing with healing anyway and when i've spoken about the homeopathy and they're all going oh we don't know about homeopathy and as soon as i talk about the energy they get it they understand it straight away because it's healing sound healing sound bath it's all about the frequency all about healing and as soon as i explain to them it's finding the right remedy that has the right frequency to ease the disease and because we all know about the life force we use mm. that in in healing and whether you call it the holy spirit chi life force life energy universal energy it's the same thing it's all within us mm. it's that it's that energy mm. so for me it's it's kind of part and parcel I, I and I, I did this because it just felt like such a complementary with everything else I do and it just fits in beautifully and the lecturers are amazing absolutely amazing we've got people who work at Helios who teach us they are phenomenal in their knowledge you know there's nothing about acutes they don't know and what a place and I love being somewhere you can sit and talk to people and you get that camaraderie you don't get online it's just amazing i'm so glad i chose to go to Chichester and yeah, go to I, south, I, south. I, echo, I echo what you just said there yeah absolutely wonderful um thank you for for sharing that and um uh jules uh over to you i do like your background very professional indeed <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much I said my office um, could be a little bit tidier, so it hides a multitude of sins, I think, this evening. You don't know um, what I have yeah, to, so, to get on here. Man, it's really, really lovely. And I actually, I don't think I've stopped smiling since everybody stopped talking because it just takes me back, like Joe said, it just to even be invited to take part and participate in this call this evening is is really lovely. And it just goes to show that extension of family when you leave college. So I'm postgrad, just in case um, I didn't say that bit at the, at the start. So um, I graduated with Joe. And we do, we keep in touch, you know, it was um, lifelong friends, I think, from probably the, the third weekend, you know, first couple of weekends, you're really unsure of yourself and, and you really try and find your feet and you're not really sure uh, what experience anybody else has got. And I think um, most people will probably echo the sort of, oh, I don't know anything and everybody knows a little bit more than I do. And actually, when you work, walk in those uh, with that college um, for probably the first six months, you really don't know very much. Um, it is a huge lifelong learning journey and oh boy what a journey it is um, and we're still learning and and I love learning but I think it's a uh, what brought me to it there's a, a sort of a calling I guess I think I, I got to a certain age I'd been through um, a lot of um, I guess conventional medication um, at certain times in my life and, and and homeopathy really helped me turn a corner when when I just wasn't getting better um take it taking the conventional stuff you know so um it's not to say there's not time and a place and as we say we can prescribe alongside safely and and uh, really be complementary in that in that respect but um there was a, a yearning and a, and a calling and and I'm so glad I did it's um as Hannah said I think also um right at the beginning you know you, you think it's going to be a four years oh my gosh you know it's such a long time but boy does that time fly by and actually when it comes to an end boy do you miss it and um, there is a bit of a void, but there's not that much of a void because everybody's still there. Look, we're, we're part of a Lumi group now, and it's um, it's really nice. I, I've been back to the college on several occasions for the, the CPD events, which are really welcome. I went to Anne Lavitt's um, um, afternoon session, and it was amazing, you know, and I feel very privileged to to be part of that um, and to have been invited back to that and share that with with others in the, in the group. So, um, you know, Joe and I are still here. We're, we're practicing homeopaths. And I think um, for, for everybody that's, that's going through it at the moment, you know, those first two years, oh, my God, the books and the knowledge and the mm -hmm. cramming and trying to remember it all is is near on impossible. And um, I challenge anybody to that's sat in the room to think that they probably haven't wanted to walk out and leave it at some point um, during that journey. But it doesn't happen at, at South Downs because you have that support network around you, whether that be your lecturers, um, your year group or, or others in the college and um, I'm so fortunate to have, have been part of that and I, and I thank everybody and continue to you know to hope that we are friends lifelong friends for, forever more because we learn from each other every day and um, there's, there's not enough I don't think still um, of homeopaths in the world I think we're out there spreading the message and the, the message is getting louder the drum beat is getting louder and um, you know complementary therapy just needs to keep banging that drum and making ourselves heard because there are more and more people listening to complementary therapies these days and we've got um we've got a job to do 
and support people. So thank you very much for inviting me. That was very inspiring, I must say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, Michelle and Cheryl, although we can't see you, I don't know if you uh, can speak or are you uh, traveling? I know you may be traveling. Um, I do apologize for coming in late. Sorry, Cheryl. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe. I couldn't get onto my um, laptop. Um, so I'm trying on my phone. And although I do seem to have um, the phone does allow, for some reason, it's not coming up on here. I do apologize. I will work on it. Hi, Michael. Perhaps if you could tell me how to do it. Um, <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. But if you have anything to share about your experience, uh, Cheryl, that would be very, very good indeed. Um, I feel very privileged to um, teach at South Downs. Um, I graduated from the Northwest College of Homeopathy 30 years ago. And um, I was pregnant with my first son and he had his 30th birthday last year. And um, I've been a practicing homeopath. And as Julia said, you never stop learning. Um, I entered the course thinking, you know, why why is it going to take four years to learn this? And then very rapidly realized that four years was never going to be enough. And as I say, I've never stopped learning. But I do love teaching at South Downs because the students are always so enthusiastic and they, um, you know, they remind me of sometimes how much I do know, but more often than not, how much I don't. And, you know, I've particularly bonded with the group that are now in year three, I think. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's just been such a privilege and um, as anyone who knows me knows, I'm a great fan, some might say groupie, of Sankaran's work, the sensation method. I absolutely love it. And it just, from day one, homeopathy has made perfect sense. And that's it. End of. Oh, thank you so, so very much for sharing that. Now, exciting news coming up in June because it's an open day. So Christian and Michael do share What's what's the plan? What's going to happen at uh, South Downs Open Day 2024? Do you, to, do you want to feel that one, Michael? Yeah, I can feel that one. <laughs> I'll feel that one. Yeah, so on uh, Saturday, June the 8th, we have our uh, Open Day at Chichester University, but, but also because we offer blended learning, and I've just noticed my computer is very low on battery, so I'm about to just <laughs> lean to my side so I don't die while I'm saying this. Not literally. Right. Yeah. So uh, Saturday, June the 8th. So like I said, we have a, a blended learning experience. So it's like a hybrid event at Chips University. So there is the online aspect that we do deliver all our lectures that we do at the, the college weekends online as well. So people can come down in person, see us, actually meet us in person, which is, I think is favourable to meet us in person. But also we have it as a hybrid event. And that, that will start at half past nine on Saturday, June the 8th. And there's tickets on Eventbrite. If you want to find uh, South Down School of Homeopathy on Eventbrite, you can get free tickets, either for the online version or for the in-person version. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a bit of meeting other students, meeting lecturers. Where Chris and I will deliver some, maybe some snippets of lectures about mental health and homeopathy and remedies and, and uh Christian can maybe add to what I've just said, if I've missed anything, Christian. Uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much it. But um, there's obviously I'll talk through the course in a little bit more detail and sort of answer any questions about. So it's basically sort of discussion about what life at college and what they can expect and uh, how terrifying <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to say at this point, you know, I've done the homeopathy for... 30 years. Uh, I was I worked at a children's clinic in a uh, charity for uh, 18 years, 20 years. I think it was thousands, several thousand children there. Um, I just can't say I've never had a dull day working. I mean, I really I can't. You know, it's I am totally privileged uh, to do a job that is just so interesting. I mean, as sort of Joe said, it's like every case is different. I mean, it's sort of crazy and frustrating at sometimes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have students who 
when they're sort of at supervision stage are saying, oh, I'm sure this, I know this remedy is silica. And I'm like, I don't know it's silica. I mean, <laughs> yes, and I still don't know it's silica. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, everything is working out, thinking through. There are just so many different ways of looking at things. And the sort of the, the knowledge base that you have to have is phenomenal, but it's just so broad. I mean, it's not just the remedies of themselves, but it's also understanding people and sort of humans and how we interact and how we deal with life. I mean, it's that whole side of sitting in a room with, I've sat in rooms with and just heard the most amazing, awful, incredible stories from people. And it's been such a privilege. I just, just that side alone, just being able to ask anything mm. of another person about their life experience. And that, even that process, I believe is also part of the homeopathic sort of thing that we do. But um, as a job, <laughs> amazing wonderful thank you so much michelle we can see you finally hey <laughs> and i'm now off mute hello hi Atik. how are you uh just for I'm the listeners good. and viewers michelle has been traveling but thankfully she's joined us so uh would well, you to like respond to, uh... to your question about can you do homeopathy and study it on top of a full-time job the answer is very much yes it might take some juggling um i'm listening to podcasts uh, you know on your commute on the way home from town but it, it can be done you're busy but it's very worthwhile as people have been saying and how do you how have you found your experiences at um, at the school like everyone else has been saying it's it's been a phenomenal experience i'm also a year three student and um it, it's like nothing i've ever you know experienced or studied before studying homeopathy is different it's it's mind expanding you know, it's not your typical, you know, subject. It forces you to re-examine everything, including yourself. Um, I've always been very interested in energy and physics, particularly, you know, you know, quantum physics. And, you know, we end up in discussions about, you know, the life, the universe, you name it. Uh, it's very difficult to, you know, although we're studying classical homeopathy, it's very difficult to just stay, you know, within a, um, <laughs> a very limited kind of range and just looking at, you know, how you treat it, it quickly you know, takes you into new exciting areas that expands you, you know, and uh, as I say, and it, it's quite a reflective, we keep a diary in uh, mm -hmm. most of the years where we have to use that to actually help us through our, you know, kind of process our experience of going through this amazing course. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Like anybody who's thinking about it out there, I would say, do it, you know, don't hesitate, go try. Brilliant. It's 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 been so so good to have everyone here. Now before we call it a day, uh some fun, okay? And this is not to do with uh this is your personal favorites, so I'm gonna ask you. Um uh, favorite books. So let's go in, let's go around, okay? And this includes the principles. So let's start from the from my right. So uh Car actually, favorite book. Um, and if it's not book, then maybe one or two, okay? And then followed by favorite remedies that you like personally as far as you know what you feel about the remedy and what you've read about it and, and used Ooh, so gosh, books and favorite remedies. Okay. it's really hard isn't it well uh i'll probably have to say favorite book is murphy's uh, materia medica and um a repertory because we are in them all the time <laughs> so, so um so let's uh, plug murphy's uh, favorite <laughs> remedy really hard one actually um i've had such great results with um different remedies uh for all sorts of different reasons with um with myself and with clients but I i'm gonna go nat muir um because i've had quite a lot of uh people who've had great results with nat muir um uh, i've used the remedy myself um and um i i've, I've seen great results wonderful uh theresa um, my favourite book, I think, well, the one I read the most uh, is The Sankaran Schema. Um, when I first bought it, under Cheryl's recommendation, actually, um, it was, I thought, what the hell am I looking at in here? <laughs> I didn't understand any of it, all these. Oh, that's the new one. That's the new Anyone one. I think I've got a bookshop here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going to get them all out. <laughs> got the old one, but the, I want the new one. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um but uh and my favorite remedy i would say uh is budlia um mm. because it's used in such cases of trauma and it's been described i've had patients describe it to me as as just having a, a big hug 
that everything is going to be all right. And I just found that so beautiful and mind blowing. So, yeah, that's me. I don't um, know why I'm suddenly I'm, in the dark. I'll skip you know? myself because I can see myself on the screen. Uh, thank you, uh, Caroline and Theresa. Uh, Hannah? Uh, my favourite book would, without a doubt, be my just my Prisma, my Vermeulen Prisma, of which I've got three copies. Mm -hmm. One, it, which is quite indulgent because I can't afford to buy that many books. And I don't know why I've got three, but I've ended up with three. One that sits on my desk, one by my bed and one in the car. And even if I'm doing the school run, waiting to pick the kids up and I've got five minutes, I just, every time I pick it up, there's something new in it. Um I couldn't pick a favourite remedy, but my favourite remedy lecture in the four years was Christian's lecture on Thuya, which I, I'm guessing we've all heard at some point or had at some point, which to me is that should be recorded. Everybody needs to hear that. It was just I remember driving home my sort of over an hour journey home, just thinking it was just mind blowing mind-blowing lecture how much information um christian managed to it's it sort of extract on this one remedy it was just yeah that was my highlight of the course really oh, thank, thank you very much christian thank you <laughs> christian, you must record that lecture and we'll do a webinar a special one on that yeah <laughs> it's brilliant brilliant uh ella moving down to you yes hi oh well, my favorite book i actually looked it up in the on the, the bookshelf there's the Tao of homeopathy oh, by right. Ian Watson yes it's an amazing book and my favorite remedies can I choose two because I, I use them all the time um it's phosphorus um I love phosphorus and uh, I have been using it myself many times uh I have prescribed it now that I'm year three and uh, second favorite would be rainbow it's another oh, one that's, oh, that's it's good one. quite that's amazing choice. Thank you. Uh, Joe. Helen's, to, uh, Helen's taken the words out of my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, thinking gosh, exactly. I was. I was thinking, well, I like, I've been, the books come and go, you know, and I, obviously Robin Murphy is something that's really important to us. Um, but also the Colin Griffiths books that I've started to look at with the new remedies. And Rainbow was, was the remedy I I just, when I like the name of it, I like the look of it, and I'm, I'm like taking it myself. Okay. That's like, exactly stop doing this, isn't it? Yeah. You know, because you know, they come on the show, so I ask for a copy, okay? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. No, so that's it, really. So uh, Ella took the words out of my mouth. I'm also a phosphorus fan, I have to say, and I've seen great success with it. But to be honest, you know, the golden oldies, uh, you know, I've got a son who plays rugby. I use Arnica a lot of the time. Arnica, mm. Rutter, you know, all those ones, all those really familiar ones, um, you know, that we can just hand out um you know routinely so yeah that's my oh thank you Annabelle uh Joe over to you um so I think my favorite book would be the clinical observations of children and re the remedies for children by Farrot Master that's just an incredible book um at differentiating all sorts of symptoms with um and all the remedies and things I've used it so I use it all the time with children um, all the children I treat, but also my own three children who are, well, they're sort of almost teens now, but yeah. Um, and so that's my favourite book. Remedy wise, I'd ha probably have to have two as well. Firstly, Morgan Back, one of the bowel mo no sodes, which, um, yeah, I think it's just a remedy that I, and Jules is smiling because we always, we always talk about Morgan Back. Jules, um, um, treats lots of um, people with eczema and I know she uses it loads for that I just use it lots for all sorts yes yeah, skin issues but also obviously gut issues but the gut's so closely related with so many other symptoms so it's a remedy I use all the time um, and then also to echo what um, Ella said um, rainbow as well I use a lot um, and it's brought I don't know one particular clients I can think of who has um, chronic fatigue syndrome she uses it all the time to bring her out to sort of sort of very dark places that she used well used to be in mm. um and it's a remedy that I yeah I prescribe quite a lot for all sorts of different um cases and different situations thank you uh over to you Lou on my right hi <laughs> um my favorite book gosh I've got lots of favorite books um 
I think the soul of remedies is one of my favorites at the moment. It's a go-to if I get lost in the big books and all the explanations and I just go to something that's simplified, got keynotes and very good ones at that. I love Sankaran and the way he describes the the mental state of a lot of remedies because I like dealing with mental health myself and seem to attract a lot of varied clients that have either got ADHD or some mental trauma going on or a big grief or, you know, lots of different things. Um, Favourite remedy? Oh, um, at the moment, tarantula. I love the spiders. There's lots of different spider remedies. And recently, I think um, we had a lecture with Christian again, which was absolutely amazing with all the spider remedies. And it made me realise, you know, and also my client, he, he was, he's been taking um tarantula for his adhd and his anxiety has virtually disappeared it's amazing to watch that journey with him mm-hmm. such a privilege and see him get better yeah so tarantula is my top remedy at the moment <laughs> wonderful thank you um you know it's quite funny because uh, you're in front of me in a certain order and it doesn't move unless the camera goes off or, or something but on youtube <laughs> i'm just trying to work out where everybody is because they're all over the place so in yeah. front of me now for example i've got Christian to my left and then Michael. But over there, Michael's taken the first spot because he's moved up. <laughs> it's like that little tic tac game. Do you remember the tic tac game? <laughs> it's some sort of a virtual competition going on. But I don't, I don't know just, what's going on there. I'm anyway. Rocky. <laughs> um, Jules, over to you for favorite book or books and remedies. Um, favorite book or books. Um, I think probably my favorite book when I was at college was. Um, Jan Shelton's um, Homeopathy and Minerals, um, just because there was a lot of logic to it at the time when there wasn't a lot of logic in the rest of the world. Um, mm. It kind of gave me a bit of a system to follow, and I think I used it for an awful lot of pieces of homework, so that was that was really cool. Um, that, and I think probably Norland's signature of myasms, so it's sort of two ends of the extremes, but um, um, two really, really lovely books. Um, in terms of favourite remedies, um, mm. I'm totally with Jo. She, she did laugh and we did smile about Morgan Back. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's. I think the bell nose odes are amazing, and um, um, there's pictures of congestion and and working. You know, I've seen some really transformational stuff with with kids um, in terms of um, sort of healing skin and things. So that's really amazing. Um, and personally, and one of those really profoundly grounding remedies, oak is my my go to favourite. Mm-hmm. I think for for many people, um, and I think that's a really relevant remedy today. Thank you, uh, Jeanette. Uh, well, I've already mentioned this. It's the that's kind of my focus. It's a bit of a bible for me, the homeopathy. And the reason I like it is because it's laid out with signs and symptoms and the best remedies to go. Which obviously is not it, it, because you'll have several symptoms together. So it's great for for just a really quick. Because when you're in labour with someone, it's it's active, it's acute. You mm. need to be quick with going. Is it this, 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 or this? Um, so that's why I really like that favorite ones oh, well there's this you know you've got Kimika Fuga, you've got the colophyllum which are the usual sort of brilliant ones for helping in labor but and I can't be without arnica it's great for placenta release um and pulsatilla for breach and things like that so there there are some that you can't kind of be without but one that's quite a surprise one is apis I it it's really good when you get that problem with actually releasing the uh, needing a wee after you've had a baby is really common to get a very full bladder and it stops the placenta mm. apis really helps with that and i've also discovered it's very good at expelling the placenta which has been a bit of a wonder <laughs> but the mm. other thing that's that's uh, i wouldn't be without there's um carb of edge and aconite are mm. amazing for fetal distress absolutely amazing you watch the trace and the trace goes back to normal it's just Wonderful. phenomenal. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Michelle, over to you. Uh, uh, it's I've got to give a shout out to any of the Colin Griffiths books because that was my lead into homeopathy. I, I found one of his books mm. on a bookshelf in Waterstones and uh, and never really looked back, but all of his books are fantastic. But I will give a, um, another mention to a book I've just finished, which I'd recommend, which is by Ling McTaggart called The Field. And in the introduction, she talks about homeopathy and it it does a real deep dive into some of the hard science surrounding water and water memory. And um, it's it's a relatively short book, but if you haven't, you know, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. 
And my favorite remedy, I would probably say, I don't know what me and my family. You got it. Uh, It's good, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) You can't put it. That warning is you won't be able to put it down. It's a real page turner and and very relevant to, you know, what we do. (laughs) And Mm. uh, yeah, favorite remedy, I think it's going to be rocks pox because i don't know what my family would have done without it every kind of you know pulled muscle and sprain probably that with arnica um uh yeah couldn't live without it thank you so we're, the the co-principles are last by the way okay because it's the icing on the cake <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, over to you annabelle <laughs> hannah annabelle. i think it's hannah isn't it? I was saying about Rainbow and Foss. I think. Oh, sorry, Hannah. Hannah. I've been. Yeah, I've Hannah's been. been. Yeah. Oh, Hannah's been. Cheryl, yeah, then. I think it's down oh, to Cheryl. 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 Down to Cheryl. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. It's, they keep moving their things around. I'm trying to work out where I was. <laughs> Cheryl, sorry, Cheryl. Cheryl. Uh, okay, well, anyone who knows me, it's got to be anything. Oh, like she's that. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> very kindly gave me a new copy of um, Sankran's first schema um, because my old one had worn out and I'm very, very careful with books. Uh, but I have just ordered, and it should come tomorrow, version two of the schema. So I'm very much looking forward to to doing into that. Um, I've recently discovered David Lilly's books. I did um, a master's in Jungian psychology and he really young his outlook so um and he's written books on raven and um wolf and uh, a, a book on just general archetypal healing which is you know one of those that in the middle of the night when you can't sleep mm-hmm. I pick up. Uh, favorite remedy is got to be carcinosin um i think it's one of those um miasmatic nosodes for our time um, but it also makes a fantastic remedy as well which I thankfully discovered when one of my sons needed it a long time ago so yeah got to be carcinosin and then buddleia arnica of the soul so yeah well, fantastic. thank you, thank you. Thank you. I, I'd like to mention that Colin Griffith <clears throat> he's been on the on, on my podcast before but We've recorded a two-part special, which is coming out in a couple of weeks' time. And this is on volume three of his new material, Medica, talking about homeopathy and the link with astrology. Fascinating conversation. Uh, do look out for that. And also Rajan Sankaran returns again in a few weeks' time. I think his, his one is coming out in mid to late May. Uh, talking about schema two itself and, uh, you know, the sensation method and what led him to where he is uh, at this moment. Now... This is what we've always been waiting for, okay? So we can draw the curtains here. <laughs> Michael J. Bird and Christian Taylor, here are the questions, okay? This sounds like I'm on bullseye or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> favorite books, favorite remedies, okay? Now, this is going to be recorded in the history of time, okay? Okay. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, shall I go first, Christian? Yeah, go on then, yeah. Okay, well... Books wise, it's Fatax Materia Medica. Mm, nice. Just my first copy is probably in 1990, and I've got another copy now, and it just is it's with me wherever I go when I'm doing any clinic. Fatax goes in my bag. It's just so so beautifully put together, and the remedies in a, in just a couple of pages just come alive for me. With Fatax, is what he's chosen to put in there and represent remedies. Fatax. Is the one for me when it comes to books. So, so that's what I use. And remedies wise, it's a uh, stramonium. So stramonium I've used so much in mental health with trauma and when that terror remains, but also it's got that psychosis aspect to the remedy as well. And it's just served me so well in treating people who have suffered any kind of trauma and abuse. So stramonium is is an amazing remedy for me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Wonderful insight. And last but certainly not least, Christian. Uh, I think it's going to be Moon Witch Spider King by Marlon James, which is a, a deep dive into the darkest soul of Africa uh, and power. Sorry. But not into <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, great book, me. By the way. I was thinking, uh, where on the shelf I've got that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the moment, I have, I have favourites, but I think really Vermoulin to me is just the number one for uh, Materia Medica and 
Uh, and some of his lesser well-known books like The Moon on Fungi uh, and Monero, which is his sort of deep delve into sort of uh, disease-based um, remedies. But recently I got his huge four-volume uh, cassette on uh, plant kingdoms uh, and putting having and him giving descriptions of us, the underlying sort of ideas um, born out of really born out of pharmacology in some senses, but born out of a really deep look at the ways in which different plants uh, act on people uh, and then theming those according to sort of the, the uh, families. Uh, and it's been really, really useful and sort of transformation I sort of had as sort of really captured or I, through that process, I feel like I've sort of understood my way forward again. Um, because I can't I just think constantly home office is a sort of a journey where you you find out times where you're flowing really well and you think you're really on top of it and then it just feels like oh, I got stuck somewhere and I'm just repeating the same old things uh and anyway just saying this is just an amazing uh four volumes also amazingly expensive by the way so uh it's not <laughs> just that you're gonna pick up um favorite remedies for anyone who knows me I don't really have favorite remedies uh I like all remedies and what I like particularly is more like our favourite rubrics. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> of course, yes. Yeah, so, um, Agaricus, uh, Delusions is commanded to go down on your knees by a giant mushroom and disembowel yourself. Got to be one of the top <laughs> ones, uh, without a doubt. Um, and what that. else have we got? Oh, Calendula is an unknown one. Um, delusions that the unit, there's a split in the universe and or a delusions, there's a split in his soul. Which mm. I think is a... Uh, I talk, I've got a new take on calendula, which I'm going to do at one of the webinar, webinars, but I just, it was just such a profound uh, expression of the overall uh, theme at work in calendula. So that's kind of what I do. So favourite remedies, not really like that, uh, just favourite rubrics, sorry. <laughs> thank you, it's a wonderful answer. So um, thank you to everybody. We're going to um, Call it a day here as far as the live YouTube stream is concerned. We are, of course, going to stay on just for a few minutes after the live ends. But for those tuning in, this was uh, the two principals, the tutors, the postgrads, and the students from South Down School of Homeopathy. Please do check at them. Uh, please do check them out. Just uh, Google South Down School of Homeopathy and have a look also on the Instagram handle and Facebook page. And um, if you're interested in homeopathy, this is a place to go. Certainly, it's wonderful. And well, you've had the real life, real experience of what it's like studying homeopathy at South Downs. So thank you, everybody. And um, do stay on. I'm just going to close the live. So thank you. And